This is the Five Point Play Podcast, the diehard Duke basketball fan podcast. The night is always darkest just before the dawn. The dawn is coming. Nine, ten, eleven new players. <laughs> hey, look, we still got Tyrese Proctor. We still got Caleb Foster. But John Shire did his thing in this offseason. We wanted to wait until the roster was basically set. And now is Malik Brown, Mason Gillis, Keon James. We got... Sion. You're not above six five. Sion, not Sion. It's just Sion. No, it's you just said Sion. that. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm letting the people. Okay. Know. Okay. I'm calling him S. Everybody wants to call him Sion. Sion. It's not. It's not Sion. It's Sion. I'm calling him S. Jerry. And, and he, he is wearing number fourteen, uh, which I love to see. Bring bring the uh, the toughness back of Nate James, uh, James. two thousand one. Um, but yeah, John, like, you know, John Shire came out there and said, you know what? If you're not with us, you're against us. <clears> if you don't want to stay here and compete you're out. And that's pretty much what happened. Like, if you look at the roster, there is a lot of different things you have to, you know, check off. If you were not competitive, you're out. Wow. If you're not at least 6'5", you're out. Uh, if you don't have talent, Spencer you're Hubbard. out. If you, except for Spencer Hubbard. Good shout out to him. Uh, if you are not competitive, you're out. And, you know, he does all these things, and he puts together just an absolutely beautiful roster around Cooper Flagg. So there will be no excuses. We got the birds chirping. That's how happy we are. Um, we we are a roster now, Pablo, in my opinion, that is well balanced. There are no holes on the roster. Tell me otherwise, but I, I'm ecstatic about what John Shire has done in the offseason. Nah, you speaking facts, bro. I mean, if you look at this roster, this is probably, you know, top to bottom, pause. It's probably one of the best rosters, you know, like balanced wise, you know what I'm saying, that we've had in a long time. You know what I mean? Like we got, I mean, we got it all. We got the height, uh, pause. We got the size, you know, shooting. We got defenders. Uh, we got guys that can pass the ball. We got good character guys. We got, uh, you know what I mean? Great teammates. Like we got it all, bro. Like before, you know, the conversation we was having, I mean, really, we really don't have any excuses anymore now. You know what I mean? Other than experience. You know, I mean, well, actually, we we got experience. You know? Yeah, we got experience. Right. plenty of experience for the head coach. Transfers, you know, what I'm saying, and our two guys we bring him back. So it's like, bro, I'm I'm super excited. Dope ass roster. Let's go, man. Let's get number six. Yeah, not only that, like you can. Uh, I, sorry, TK. I, just, real quick before I lose this comment, like we we have Duke fans across the board saying. Or, well, we want a top ten recruiting class, but we also want you to to like make hella portal moves, and we also want you to r- retain stars. Well, okay, so we've checked all the boxes now, correct? That's right. We have checked all those boxes. I don't want to hear a peep. I don't want to see a damn peep because I promise you, I'm coming for you. Like that's crazy. Yeah. We got stars coming back. We right. got the best recruiting class, maybe on paper since ever. Ever. It's. I mean, it's mm. close. It's, it's not far off. Right. And then you you make splashes in the portal. I don't know what else you want, man. This like the no excuses for this team. It's it's. People say this a lot. It, championship or bust, but this might be a championship or bust situation. Yeah, I think that a lot of people had that feeling this year, but, you know, obviously the roster and um, and the injuries, you know, so that hurt the depth, right? So, right now, even with injuries, AC, I feel like we have the depth that can withstand some of those. Obviously, you don't want them. That wouldn't be ideal, but I feel like John's put together a roster where you know, you say it every year, oh, well, 10 guys, 11 guys could potentially mm-hmm. play. Now, obviously, that's not going to happen, but right. injuries are part of the game. Mm-hmm. And John's saying enough is enough. He's seen his first two years where injuries did play a factor mm-hmm. and saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I can to build a tough roster that, you know, if we do get injuries, we can sustain it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, I think that was the idea, right? Like, if you look at the guys who came in, and I'm counting the recruiting class too, and then you look at the guys that left, a lot of the things that the guys that left did, like the guys who are coming in from the portal also do, but they just do it better because they're more experienced, they've done it longer. Like, 
I mean, you, you got you wanted a three point shooter in TJ Power, but you got one in, in Mason Gillis, and you have you know the shooters in Knipple and Darren Harris and Sheffield, even if you wanted it. Like, so that that portion is taken care of. You wanted defense, well, the entire team plays defense that he's brought in this time around. We have the seven footer that everybody wanted. Like, we have all the things that John was trying to do originally, but I think he was trying to do it in a way that just doesn't work right now in college basketball, at least with the recruiting classes that we've seen for the past couple of years, which is build your team for recruiting. That's what he wanted to do, right? Because we tried it last season. We didn't bring anybody in. We didn't lose anybody. The entire team was retained. It clearly didn't work for what he wanted. And guys had other options and other things they needed to do. And he brought in what he truly wanted a team to be. Like, everybody's over 6'5". Like, it's very clear. Right. (laughs) It's very clear what he did and what he wanted to do. Don Shire basically said, uh, if I'm taller than you, you are not on this roster. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, more or less. Now, Pablo, I don't want to focus so much on um, last season. You know, I know that it's only, you know, two months past, right? I don't want to focus on last season because I don't want to. What do you mean, Elite Eight, by the way? Like, what? The, why? Right. Like, that's, like, that's a bad was, thing for some reason. Like, what? Yeah. It. That's where I was going with it. Um, you know, we talk about uh, the experience factor of the things that, you know, I, I, I've been saying this on the spaces and, and, you know, different things that we've had that John Shire clearly had a checklist. And each of the players that he brought in checked those boxes experience, mm-hmm. uh, talent, toughness, competitiveness, all those sorts of things. Talk about the roster, though. You know, let's try to, you know, if, if you were the coach on this roster, every every coach, you see it in the NBA playoffs, you get down to seven, eight guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you see that happening here? And if so, who are those seven, eight guys? It'll, it'll happen in March. Like, yeah. Like, it'll it'll happen. Does, right? Yeah. It'll, yeah. It'll happen in March. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I think eventually it will happen. I mean, yeah. I think uh, the season we use for development, though, like there's gonna right. be time to, just because some of these guys, like like just because Darren Harris or somebody else doesn't play all forty games, ten minutes a game, it doesn't mean that he wasn't used or utilized. Maybe John plays him in December and January, and even like end of November or something to start seeing what he has in him. Like, is he somebody who can fit? Is he somebody? Is he part of the seven? Like. What his skill sets does he does, does he equate to being one of the one of the seven? Like that, you, you yeah. see that he, we he's done that his two years so far, and every coach does that. They play guys who normally aren't going to play, give them some development time in the middle of the season, and then move on. Like this roster is also built for injuries, AC. Oh like, yeah, no, it's it's, if, it's if, not if just injuries, it. not just not just injuries. Somebody not fulfilling their role. Like, sure. If, if somebody, and I think that's, if somebody's that not is. doing their job, they're going to get replaced. I think that, like, that is f- freshman insurance, real quick. I think that's freshman insurance. You know, where I'll, this I'll year, give you that. You know what I mean? Where I thought that this year, like, you, you had to rely on hopefully Sean Stewart or TJ Power mm-hmm. or, you know, before Christian Reeves got hurt, mm-hmm. uh, Christian Reeves, someone that's really young and inexperienced, yeah. coming in and, and just outplaying his expectations. Mm-hmm. Whereas this year, Darren Harris can kind of run his own race. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that's unheard of in today's college sports. Mm-hmm. Where you know the first you know year I don't get my minutes I'm out and whatever if that's the case it is what it is I mean that's the, the landscape of college sports but this year I, and again I pose this to Pablo but like I feel like you know the way he's constructed this roster is almost with the exception of Kamon and Cooper that is freshman proof because even if they they can, they can take their time yeah no I mean. I think you you hit the nail on the head. I think he definitely constructed that roster that way, and I think he just understands, man. He just he just looking at the landscape, man, of things. And and you know, if you go back to I think it was last year or the year before last, his first his first year, you know, when he talked about you know just just recruiting and how he wanted to keep players for a couple of years, right, just to have an older roster or try to have somewhat of an older roster. Um, I think he's trying to, you know, I think he's doing it that way now. You know what I mean? I think he's actually able to do that now. You know what I mean? Where he's bringing guys back. You saw him do it last year. He's doing it again this year, but he's also bringing in older talent that played for other teams that have experience. And he's just using, he's just utilizing every trick in the bag right now, because I think he understands like the landscape has changed. Does he know? Like, obviously he knows that, you know, having the best freshman, you know, you can still win. Mm-hmm. But he knows that it has to be a mixture of stuff now. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just thinking, like, I could just roll out five freshmen. It's going to be hard to do that, you know what I'm saying, and actually win. I think you can still do it, 
But those five freshmen have to be special and, and everything just has to yeah. fall in place the right way. You know what I'm saying? To, to continue something like that. But um, as far as uh, like roster wise, like I think it'll get cut down, you know, um, and, and, and they, they might have eight. And I think those, you know, that eight, will, you know, it'll be probably like Tyrese, Caleb, Kamon, Cooper, uh, Sion, Mason, obviously Malik Brown. I think you're going to see the older guys playing with the exception of Cooper and them. Now, you know, now granted, we could have another Jared McCain, you know what I'm saying, on the team. That just breaks, that just breaks through, and that's just not going to be denied. That can happen. Now, if that happens, you might see a little different, you know, you might need to see a little difference, you know what I'm saying, uh, right. roster-wise. But other than that, I think it's pretty set in stone, and, and, and it looks pretty concrete what he wants to do. Ultimately, like he wants to play those guys that return. He wants to play the, the 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 projected NBA lottery picks, obviously, and then he wants to mix that with the transfers. So, yeah, that's that's what I think. If we're if, if we're going to talk about the roster getting narrowed to eight in March, I mean, SJ, because I don't know how to say his name, and I'm sorry, but y'all know what I'm talking about. SJ is going to have to take Connie's spot. I just don't see. After watching all the film on Con Canupa, I do not see where he doesn't, at least, like AC said, at least have a chance to yeah, prove sure. himself to to be a part of that eight man <laughs> roster. And like that, SJ is a perfect replacement for him. Like that, like TK said, that's freshman insurance. If Con cannot do what we expect him to do in Durham, all right, well, we got to do to come up for you. We got a we got a scoring guard. We got a scoring guard on the in, in the backhand, just ready to roll. And I think Malik Brown can do the same thing. I think he can play seven games in a row and then not play ten games in a row and then come off the bench and do the same thing that he did in the first seven games. I, I'll say he, real quick too, uh, not to cut you off, D, but I think honestly, if you look at the the makeup of the roster. Um, and you talk about playmakers. Um, it's funny that you mentioned Khan because I think he might be the second best playmaker we have on the team. To be honest, I'm with you. telling you, he's good. Uh, and that's that's he, I think he that's might be the McCain. Tyrese Proc- yeah, I think yeah. he might be the second best playmaker. You know what I'm saying behind mm-hmm. uh, Tyrese on the team because you know Caleb is pretty much a scorer. You know what I mean? He's not so much of a set him up type guy. He just wants to. You know what I mean? He wants to score. He can set you up and he can pass. But he's more of a, you know, I'm I'm scoring. You know what I'm saying? I'm scoring. I'm being an offensive threat. I think Con Knipple, he does a little bit of all of that. Um, but and I think we'll get into that more in the player profiles that we got coming up. Yeah, but, for sure. Uh, I, I didn't, you know, I don't and want I don't, to be too much of a spoiler, but I, don't, I, I 100% agree with you, bro. I don't think CN and Con are in competition. I think they have some, yeah. I think they have some similar skill set type stuff, but just in terms of the playmaking ability, but they're two totally different players, too. Because yeah. seeing James' athleticism, the length, all the stuff he offers versus what Khan offers, it's not that Khan, Khan's not an athletic. They just have different games. I don't think they're the two that are competing. I feel like the three – I think there's three spots being competed for on the wing, and it's going to be between Caleb Foster, Isaiah Evans, Khan Kanepu, and and seeing James. I, I feel like Mason Gillis, of all the transfers, I think he's the transfer who probably could get booted out easiest by a freshman if they're able to maintain the same role. But you're sure. talking about – you're also talking about the re- returning Big Ten six pl- six man of the year, who could have started for any program in, in the country. He and he to- and he did start earlier right. in his career. Yeah, he did. He did. And the season before, when Purdue was a number one seed, but they lost to Fairleigh Dickinson. Whenever he was a starter on that team, so the guy has a he has a pedigree. It's just like how how much is a three and D player going to thrive in this system? I don't know because we just haven't like even with Grandison, we haven't really seen a three and D player thrive in John's system yet. But it's only been two years, so we'll see what happens. But I think he's the – I think he is the transfer – hip Sheffield, I'm, I'm not including Sheffield right now. He's the transfer who I feel is the easiest to replace out of those those big three or, or three or whatever between him, Cian, and Malik. Because Malik, I feel like, is irreplaceable for what he's going to offer for Cooper Flag, And I feel like Cian James is too good to stay off the floor. I, don't, I think – I mean, it's, it's evident how good he is. So there, There's three people who have their roster spot solidified. Other mm-hmm. than that? Yeah, yeah. It's a toss up. I think that's exa- that is exactly right. Like, I know it's like it's assumed that Caleb is going to be that guy, but man, maybe maybe Caleb doesn't take the leap that we want to see him take yet. Who you know, uh, who knows, right? Who knows how his his career is going to plan out? I hope he does. I think he will. I'm not saying he won't. I'm just saying, like, if he doesn't, 
this is what we're talking about with this roster insurance. If if he doesn't, somebody else will. If that guy doesn't, somebody else will. It's not even just the injuries. It's if you're not fulfilling your role, somebody else has got you. Even the, Kama Malawash, because he's got Pat and Gongo right behind him. The player and, profile podcasts are going to be wild. The player oh, profile yeah. podcasts are going to be wild. Yeah. And the, the, uh, and Malik Rao, too. Like, if you're talking about, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know how you keep him off the field. I don't. I don't either, D. I don't. I, I, I don't. I, 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 how do you keep him off the court? I don't think that you can keep Malik Brown off the court. I don't think that you no can way. keep Zion or Sion off the court. And I think that, you know, obviously we, we know Proctor could mm-hmm. play. If um, Malik Brown starts, so, I wouldn't be shocked. I'll say it right I now. I think he will start. Oh, he's 100% start. He should. He's a starter <laughs> he in my book, right? Game yeah, boys, the best I'm going to end it on season. that. My, my fucking kid is standing over here looking at me like, where's McDonald's? Um... It's getting dark out here at the baseball field. I just wanted to pop in, but yeah, oh, man. yeah player profiles can't wait. Uh, yeah. and yes, sir. I'll, I'll end it on this. Yeah, Malik Brown, he's a starter in my book. Yes, sir. Hold it down, All right, fellas. All right, dude. Appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Uh, Five point play. Let's go. Yes, sir. Uh, obviously, the uh, the player profiles uh, that he was alluding to, they're going to come out all throughout throughout the summer series that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, so join our Patreon and. Um, you'll be able to see those, but uh, I, do want to call yeah. I want to call an audible real quick because that, that, this conversation, that conversation we just had about Malik Brown's got me jazzed up, bro. Okay, so I, I'm actually going there. So I'm okay, going all right, there. All right, all right. So what I think is that we have to start the year. I think we already have our starting five. Mm-hmm. That, that is, if you want to talk to start the year, is set in stone. Yeah, Proctor, Foster, Cooper Flag, Malik Brown, and Kamon. I don't think Kamon starts the year. Really? Okay, Who, who's your starting five then? I think right off the bat, you could see Reese, Foster, C and James, Cooper Flag, Malik Brown, just to start those first couple of games. I feel like Common not being there until mid-August. I think, I, think, I, think, I think that hurts. I think that's going to be a little bit of a factor, at least for how the season starts. Like, if the dude just comes out there and it's just – it's clearly evident. He plays well with everybody. Like, he's he's taken, he's, he's already taken to the game. Like, it ain't nothing to him and all that. Fine, he'll play, right? But if, if there's some struggles or if he can't call out – certain defensive rotations, because that's a big part of being the back line of the defense. It's not just jumping up and blocking shots. It's you're calling the defense out on the backside for everybody else who can't see behind you. Like, your job is communication. That was one of the things Sheldon Williams always said was he was on this podcast talking about it. He had to learn to talk. He had to learn to communicate because he didn't know how to talk. He just, in the high school, was just, let me jump and block. So he had to learn that skill, and he didn't play until he learned that skill under K. So I don't think John's going to be much different. He's, you know, I mean, because Derek Lively was an incredible communicator, and you're seeing that right now in the NBA playoffs. But I, I think Com- Common's going to have to be, and and you know, being an international coming to America and stuff like, I think some of those just mental hurdles off the bat. I think that I think it could limit him a little bit, and I think John will be careful with him. But again, if he's out there just tearing it up and just killing in practice and shit, you got to you play him. You clearly play him. I'm not saying you don't play him. All I'm saying is maybe he doesn't start because the other guys have been there from. From June on, that's all. Yeah, that's fair, Pablo. Where do you stand on that? Uh, so, I mean, I think that's that's fair to say because ultimately, I mean, if you really break it down, if you watch Common and you do it from like a scouting perspective, he struggles on defense, man. Mm-hmm. I don't think people understand that. I, don't, I think people just see the highlights and they see the block shots and. And Pops, like this that, is what but... we always talk about when you're a sh- like the the term <laughs> shot blocker or eraser. A lot of that is just that's based off of good timing, good athleticism, good length, all that stuff. But luck and and being out of position, right? Like a lot of times, a lot of those things are creative because you're out of position. Because if you're in position, they're probably not going to take the shot on you. Yeah. But now you're out of position. They're taking a shot. You're swatting against the backboard. Everybody's happy. But you are out of position. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, no, you're exactly yeah. right about that with with common. That's something I think we were going to talk about. Yeah, and I and I I just I think he will struggle a little bit, but the good part is that you know if you watch him play and you watch when he plays overseas, right? Like I wrote in my article, like he's playing against grown men, so he's yeah. getting pushed around a lot. He's out of position a lot. Well, and, in college, uh, like, he's he's gonna be able to be afforded to be out of position and make those mistakes. And be it's able gonna be to a lot better. It. It's gonna be it's gonna be a lot better for him yeah. in college. Will be a lot better. Like he won't get pushed around in college. Yeah, you know what I mean, at least, but. Um, he still has to, you know, I mean, get better laterally, like his oh, yeah. movement oh, yeah. laterally. Like he's really good north and south. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like yep. really fast, really long strides. He he really covers a lot of ground. But laterally, mm-hmm. when you know you 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 got a team that wants to, you know, put yeah. you in a pick and roll and expose you, 
Like he, he does well at recovering and shit, mm -hmm. but he, he has to get better. But the thing about it, though, is that this team is going to be so like gelled as one on a, as a defensive unit yeah. that I'm, I'm expecting some special numbers uh, from pretty yeah. much everybody on the defensive end. So he's going to he's going to learn. He's going to learn. Gonna he's, gonna, he's, he's not. Yeah, he's going to thrive. He, he's going to have a, a bigger learning curve yeah. than, Derek, than Derek Lively, though. I'll tell yeah. you that. I feel like it's more. I think his season is going to look more like Mark Mitchell, uh, Mark Williams. Mark well. Williams, yeah. Where yes. the first half of the season he didn't get like I, I think he'll get more time than Mark got to start his career, but yeah, it, it'll it'll be a thing where you won't see him start thriving until the end of the season. Of it. It's just that's just the nature of it, man. And here's the thing, right? He's going to be learning NBA concepts and everything else with with Sudan and everything with Little Ding, so that's going to be big for him. And I yeah. think that's going to help a little bit because that's the style you're starting to see is like that lateral movement, that everything on the switch or whatever. So he's going to be learning that with that Sudan team. So that's going to be helpful. It's just being able to and now implement John's system and everything and how fast is he going to be able to take to, to the plays and everything else. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. And also, you got you to gotta, you gotta realize that he hasn't been playing basketball mm -hmm. that long. So, you know, the long four years. Uh, but, you know, he also is going to be a guy that, like, he picks it up quickly. Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, it could be a struggle uh, November, December, January, mm -hmm. and then the light switch kind of comes on in February. Yeah. My thing with with him starting is that you kind of work through the growing pains because you have a team mm -hmm. that is so good that he's not going to be a reason that you lose. Right. You know, right. you just kind of want him yeah. to get that. And it might not be 25 sure. It might yeah. be 15 to start, yeah. but you kind of want to get that continuity that he's For missing sure. in June and July because mm -hmm. he's not going to be there until mid August. And you want him to get that continuity on the court and in practice yeah. with those guys. This, to make if up. he's healthy, if, if everything is good, with how, when, if he gets to his conditioning program healthily, Pat and Gong was going to, like in practice from June through August, Pat and Gong was going to really get some good reps because he's going to be playing the common role. Yeah. Like whatever whatever John envisions come on doing, Pat's gonna be doing, even though they're they're a little bit of different how they play the game, he Pat's gonna be doing what Common is supposed to be doing. So he's gonna be learning the concepts early. So like even he's somebody I think that John will be able to rely on in the early part of the season. You know, again, health we say health, everything okay, thumbs up. He could be somebody who really could contribute at the beginning of the season just because of his his profile as well. Sure. And so so the one guy that we, we haven't really talked about. And kind of crazy, 22 minutes in, 23 minutes in, Cooper Flagg, uh, best player in the country. Um, yeah. John's done a phenomenal job of surrounding him with everything that he needs and the fact that, you know, obviously Phil Powell, he, he needed a Derek Lively. He needed mm -hmm. someone in the portal last year to get, had to play out of position. That will not happen this year, Pablo. He, he can play wherever he wants to. If he wants to play the four, he can play the four. If he wants to play the three, he can play the three. Yeah, no, I agree. I think if 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 you want to fucking sell the fucking popcorn, he can do that too. You know what I'm saying? Like I think he can do whatever he wants to do on the court, you know what I'm saying? Or in the gym, wherever the case may be at Cameron. So um, you know, it's gonna be a special year, man. I mean, obviously we know what Cooper Flag is. Uh just like you said, John did a phenomenal job of surrounding him with, you know, and blending, you know, that the talent, but like the experience and the talent. You know what I mean? So I think that's what's going to, you know, pay huge dividends for him. And it's going to give Cooper a chance to be Cooper. You know what I'm saying? Where it's yeah. not like, hey, you're pretty much the only guy on the team. You know, you got the ball. Do what you got to do. No, he's going to be able to just, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's going to come into his own. He's going to be able to do what he got to do. He doesn't have to force shit. You know, but when it's time to play, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to tell him to play. You know what I mean? He's right. going to be game ready. You know what I'm saying? So we don't have to worry about, like, seeing too much of – the freshman struggles because he's putting so much pressure on himself to be great yeah. and all that. He's got a chance to just ease in, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Pause. That was crazy as fuck. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? That was wild. Not only, not only ease in, but hey, that, yo. That, fits, that fits his, that fits his personality, man. Like, yeah, his personality is one where always, always, always his personality is one where like, the bigger the moment, the better he is, the more controversy, the more, yeah, you know, more hatred, everything else. Like, just like JJ Reddick, he thrives off that shit. Christian Leitner, like another guy who's like that, Hurley, like those guys, like he's in that, that's, that's his elite. He's in that elite tier with those guys in terms of that part of the game. I think he's an elite competitor. I think he's an elite hustler. 
And you couple that with wild athleticism, the skills and smarts that he has, like the other parts of his game are going to come along. And like, he, he's not the world's best ball handler. He's not the world's best shooter. You know what I mean? He doesn't have the world's best layup package, all that stuff. But the dude, his, his competitive nature wills shots in. Like he, he hasn't will, like some of his shots are made not because he's a good shooter. It's because he willed that shit in. Like that's, that's who that kid is, man. He like some people just have that, you know, they just have that innate skill, man. And he he's he's one of them. So he, he's gonna have a special career all the way through in basketball. And I, I think you're gonna see a good start of it here. Dude, we always say like you you won't see his best basketball at Duke or whatever, but I think the basketball you see from Cooper Flag at Duke is gonna be pretty high at a high level. It's gonna be special for sure. Yeah. I definitely I definitely believe that uh he'll have a special year, man. And mm-hmm. I'm I'm super fucking excited to see what he got to do. Man. We always it's, talked about like you you can see like, a special player, like you can see their special trait. Like TK and I always always talks about that. Like you see people like talk, talking Duke players only. Like you're talking about like countdown to craziness and stuff. And we see Jabari Parker out on the court on countdown, or Kyrie when he was in countdown, or Jason Tatum at countdown. It was like it was clear and obvious. Who was the best player on the you, floor? You could, you could find out in two seconds yeah. who's the best player on that team. But like for them, it's like Jason Tatum with like how he gets shots off and and his shots against against defense and everything else. Like Zion is his athleticism. Jabari Parker was just his otherworldly skill level, being six nine and and bulky, like two thirty, pushing people around. Like Kyrie would, you know, what, what the wizardry that Kyrie produces on the basketball court, like. Cooper's is not going to look like that. Like his, like you're, when you watch him, it's so crazy. When you watch him on the court, he literally makes everybody else on the court look like they're standing still. And not because he's so much faster, but his reaction time is quick. He's, his anticipation is insane. Like those little things are so important with Cooper Flag. And that's what makes him elite. That is his elite. I think it's it's that, he looks so I, different on the court running around. Like he is moving in a different world, man. Yeah, and I think the the, the willingness and, and the competitiveness, you know, one of my favorite things about him is that he had no problem at that Duke Carolina game at Duke falling out the team. Being mm-hmm. like, you guys weren't tough enough. And if, if you're if you're saying that, yeah. that means that you weren't tough enough. Because you you, yeah. know, you don't just say that. Um, so like we, we got a lot of things to look forward to next year. We got the uh we got the mailbag though. Uh mailbag's back. Um, the, the B Hodge Natty yes, White mailbag. Um, so uh, we're going to get to this. Here's the mail, it oh. never fails. It makes me want to wipe my tail. When it comes, I want to wail. Are you done? Yep, <laughs> we have to let him play. Man. Uh, your boy, your, your boy, DH, the composer. Um, much has been made about the lack of guard depth for Duke next year. Do you uh think that there is an issue at the guard, primary ball handling, pause, roll? He, he, he yeah, well, good for him. Uh, if, if, uh, if, so, <laughs> if so, how much do you think it will impact the team next year? If not, who steps up as Tyrese? Or uh, Caleb have an injury or foul trouble. Yeah, so shout out to my man Darian, man. Shout out to Acumen. You know what I'm saying go follow us. But anyway, um, I don't think that I don't, I don't, I don't think we have a problem at the guard position. I don't, I don't, I don't know where that even comes from, bro. Like, I don't. Are they talking about before we got all like all the transfers and like? Uh, he, the he, he asked this. He asked this yesterday, so it couldn't couldn't be that. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't, I mean, I'm not even sure if he believes that we have a problem. I mean, I don't Maybe know, I gotta ask asking him. if there's like a contingency plan there, which I think John did that. Like, everybody was worried. When it was just Reese and Caleb, everybody was like, we need, a, we need this point guard. We need, we need Kane and Carlisle or whatever. And I was like, no, he's, that's not what you need. Like, stop. Like, we're not that desperate. Like, you can't, you can't recruit and, and plan for every single injury you just you got to fill your roster with guys that, that work for the role so i think john did that i think you have the two point guards and foster and, and proctor you have the multi-talented ball handlers like seeing james and and conk and nipple who can set up and can make plays for people so that's i, I think all that's covered that's covered when in, in the way john has run his system where it doesn't necessarily have to be just one point guard like you can have multiple guards setting things up John's done that for two years now, even with guards that really couldn't handle it. So 
at, at yeah. times. So I, I, I think that's not gonna, that's not gonna be an issue. I don't think. No, nah, I don't. I don't. I don't think it's an issue at all. I mean, I don't even understand. You know why people even thought it was an issue, but I mean, to each his own, man. Like we're, we're good, man. I, I I see what we have, and you know, what I mean, like the guys we brought in. You know, what I'm saying, like we're, we're fine. You know, what I'm saying, even if you go to the freshmen, you know, you got like I said, you got Khan, who's a mm-hmm. who's a who mm-hmm. can handle pause, who can handle the, who can handle the ball. You know, what I'm saying? Yeah, really. Maker. You know what I we mean? haven't really even pointed out Isaiah Evans. I don't think we. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that uh, real, but I want to. Stick, yeah, we'll get. Yeah, we'll get I, to I, that. I, I did want to talk about that, but I want to stick on this real quick yep. uh, about the guard rotation. You know, part of that is all yes, Isaiah Evans, Khan. You know, Darren Harris. I think might have problems finding rotation just because the depth that is there. But he's a shooter; he can come in. But you know, the other person that seems coming to my mind when we talk about the backcourt because everybody just assumes. That he's going to play the three or four is Mason. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like he can easily slide in, pause to you know to play one of those guard positions. I don't um, know that we ever see him on a power forward on. I this don't. Team. I don't think so either because of the depth there. But like I do think like you're talking about that the backcourt though. I feel mm-hmm. like Mason can easily yeah. do that. Yeah. No, he's a dude. He's and he can shoot. That, he's that old. He's he reminds me honestly. He's like college Bruce Bowen, man. Like. Like how, the way he's out there, I, I was not a fan. Look, I, quiet as cat, not quiet as cat. I was vocal about it. I was not a fan of like, oh, well, we're looking at Mason Gillis. I, we, Bob's, you know, we, we were texting about it. Like, yeah, I was not a fan <laughs> of that move, man. I just really yeah. wasn't. And hey, you like, sure wasn't. Again, <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> but looking at the prayer player profiles and stuff, all the things we're looking at, I'm like, nah, like the stuff he does, it fits. I think he was put into a role at Purdue where he needed to be more than he could be. I think it Duke he'll be able to settle into whatever it is John wants him to do. But that dude, yeah, no, he his his experience and everything else is invaluable. Like I, I was saying, I think he's the most easily replaceable transfer. But if he's doing all the things, shit. And he's, he's so like, he's so versatile too, and that's yeah. what I, that's what I like about him too. Because mm-hmm. I mean, they moved they moved him around the court a lot at Purdue. Yeah, yeah. Like he played he played the four, he played right. the three, the two. Like he did a lot for Purdue, and I don't think people really, you know, I don't think they mm-hmm. underscore that quite enough, you know what I mean? And 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 they don't they don't understand the impact that he actually had on that team. And the thing about it too is that he can have that same impact on Duke because he's mm-hmm. coming in, he's not looking to shoot twenty times a game. Uh-huh. He just uh-huh. he just he Mason Gillis wants to win. He wants to play defense. He wants yeah. to rebound. He wants to knock down the open shots. He wants to, you know, I mean, play make, you know what I'm saying? Out of the high post, yeah. elbows, whatever he got to do. You know what I mean? From the from the wing, from the corner, B3 and D guy. He's he's looking to do all that mm-hmm. shit just to make sure that his team is successful and wins the ball game. You know what I mean? He's not, like I said, he's not coming in here with that mentality that, like, I got to get my shots. Because yeah. if that was the case, he would have never played for Duke. Especially 100%. You know, yep. what we got coming in already, he never would have came to Duke. Mm-hmm. And that's 100%. why certain 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 other people didn't even want to come to Duke because yep. of that reason. Yep. Because they know what we got. Yep. So yeah. Like, but yeah. Yeah, man. No, that's God, that's a hundred percent though. Yeah. That it's a hundred percent that, you know, again, I keep going back to what we started with. Is that John was looking for certain type of players mm-hmm. and he fits that to a T mm-hmm. that he's a guy that that guy was the, the big time six man of the year because he's a guy that says, you know what? I'll do whatever the hell it takes yep. for my team to win. Whether yep. I'm playing five minutes, 25 minutes, I don't mm-hmm. care. I'm going to do whatever. When my number's called, I'm ready to go. Um, yep. Probably going to roll in a minute here. So I want to get the next question out uh, coming from Uncle Drew. Um, one stat that is interesting to me uh, is who leads Duke in scoring next year. I can see a way for three players to take that, though. Um, I think the next season will be fairly balanced number wise. I kind of agree with that, Pablo. In terms of who leads Duke in scoring, I don't Oof. have no idea. Damn, that's like, like, yeah, I mean, it's almost like a toss up. Um, yeah. I know people already, they automatically anointing Cooper as the right. uh, leading scorer and everything else. I don't think it's going to be him. I really don't think it's going to be him. I think, man. Fuck, man, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I really don't this know. This is the first I, year. I can, see a, I can see a world. Honestly, I can see a world. So if if he does what I think he can do, what we all know that he can do, if Caleb Foster is Caleb Foster uh-huh. playing an extended minutes in a starting role in the way that he, he plays and he hunts his shots and uh-huh. the way he plays within the offense, you know what I mean? The offense is geared like the type of 
offense that we run, you know, I mean, dribble, 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 drive, dribble handoffs, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like that kind of offense, that's the type of shit that Caleb Foster thrives in. And, you know what I mean? When the clock is down low, you know what I'm saying? One-on-one skill, that's the type of shit that Caleb Foster thrives in. So yeah. I can see a world to where he leads the team in scoring. But the thing about it, though, that if he's leading the team in scoring, I'm not talking 17, 18 points. I'm talking 13 Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because the next person, yeah. the next, you know, 13.7 and next person averaging 13.5. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. One of those yep. things. And I think if we if we if we end up balanced like that, I think we win a national championship. Yeah. I I like to harken I like to harken back to the 0304 squad with this team because of the balance, because I feel like that 0304 squad had the same amount of balance and, and yeah. similar, at least similar balance and similar, similar, similar interchangeability in lineup, but, you know, they still had their guys, but that was a team where Lil Ding was a leading scorer at 15.9, and I think if somebody's at 15.9 this year, that's high. Like, I, I can see, I can see Cooper Flag being the leading scorer. I can see the world, like, one mm-hmm. world why that would exist. Yeah. So I can see him yeah. as one of them. I can see Caleb as one of them. He was the guy who I kind of had pegged as a 15-point game score. He's the one leading the team, kind of like Daniel Ewing in a way, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, but the other person who I and this is what I want to talk about. The other person who I think could be the leading scorer on this team because of his style of play, Isaiah Evans. Bingo. It's gonna, it's gonna be one of two. Th- I feel like it's gonna be one of two things with Isaiah Evans. I think it's either gonna be he is he is having that wild Jared McCain season where he's leading the team in scoring, or he's doing absolutely nothing. I feel like he's that type of guy. Yeah, yeah not, I agree. Not, that's mentality is just like I feel like it's the the outcome is gonna be one or the other. It's gonna be either full on full bore or like non existent. Yeah, I think if he, if he's oh go ahead, my bad, TK. No, I was I was just gonna say real quick the comparisons are obviously there between him and Brandon Ingram, and we can debate that you know another time. Mm-hmm. But the, the 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 benefit that Brandon Ingram had is that he had those freshman struggles early, but he mm-hmm. could play through them. Isaiah doesn't have that option here because yeah. there are too many other players that are there. So I kind of agree with AC Pablo that it's going to be yeah. their boom or bust pause yeah. uh, for, for yeah. him. Whoa. Whoa. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> that was crazy as fuck, TK. Um, no, I remember we had this conversation a, a while ago, a little while ago, and I think I was I was talking about Isaiah. And I, I think, I honestly think, I mean, if he's playing like a significant role, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? If he has a significant role on his team playing significant minutes, then yeah. I can definitely see him, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. you know, averaging the most on the team because, I mean, that's what he does. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, he is a professional scorer. That's what he does. So, um, but I, I I just don't know if the minutes are going to be there for him. I mean, I, I'm hoping mm-hmm. so. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I'm really hopeful. Well, that's why I feel like it's boom or bust. I feel like if he's doing yeah. the thing to get those minutes, that means he's scoring because that's his thing. That's his, his thing is scoring. So that means he's scoring. If, yeah. if he's not doing that, then he's not playing. Like that's, that's yeah. kind of feel like it's gonna be with him. Is he yeah. the is he the type of player that can do that without you know like, you know obviously in high school he's a big time scorer but he has the ball the entire game mm-hmm. you know yeah. like he's not gonna have that option here right so yeah uh he's gonna have to I mean it. I think it it'd be a, a little you know it'd be a learning curve I think yeah. it'd be a learning curve for him and I think that's something that you know he just has to embrace and I think mm-hmm. he will. I know that um he's got, I he's, got, he's, got, he's, he's got some he's gotten some assurance. I'll tell you he's yeah. got some assurance from the coaching staff. So that's yeah, I, I'll, I'll say that. I want him to, man, because what he does, dude, like if he's doing what he's supposed to do, then that's special, man. That's special. I, kind of, I, I see all the comparisons to Ingram for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. But because of the roster construction, I almost stick back to like nineteen ninety eight Mike Chappelle. You know, like when he would come in mm-hmm. and knock down threes, you know, and and because the the, the uh, the, he was the, more of a defender, uh, though, right? Well, or he could be, yeah, but he could knock down threes. Oh, he, I mean, he, of course, he was like a three and D guy, like he was like Isaiah uh, Evans could be the, the next little ding. Say it again, little ding, oh. like. Look, like the scoring package that yeah. they had in the mid range, yeah. yeah. he was yeah. had the capability. Like they're not, he's not a power forward like being yeah. right, right, right. He's more powerful, right? Like I think Isaiah is a little more explosive, right, more right. Explosive but Isaiah's a little and better lateral mover, better ball handler yeah. than Ding was. He's quick, like, 
and so it's like he's got a he's got a good skill package. It's like the, like what role does he fit? So if he fits that ding role, then he's the leading scorer on the team. And that's why I put him. It's him, Cooper, or or Caleb, in my opinion, who could lead yeah. the team in scoring. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Okay. I got a roll, okay. boys. Yes, sir. All right, right pops. Airport. Appreciate, I appreciate it. I'm a holler. Yes, sir. Uh, people are dropping off this podcast like they were off the roster. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, you know, uh, we're gonna keep rolling, and now we got the OG podcast back. Let's go! All right, right back to it. Um, you know, everybody's transferring right now. That's what they're yep, doing. Yep. But uh, you know, kind of keeping that that uh, conversation going about Isaiah. You know, it was one that I kind of wish D was still here because I think you know when we're talking about competition, mm-hmm. I think that you know kind of that last spot in the regular rotation. You know, when it comes down yep. to the end of the year, I think it'll be between Khan and Isaiah. Yeah. I, think, I think that that's going to be the competition. You know, I think so. I think, I think Sion is going to play. I think oh, yeah. Mason's going to play. Yep. Malik Brown is going to play. Mm. That last spot to me is going to be either yep. is either going to be Isaiah or it will be Khan. Mm-hmm. He obviously is, is team Khan on this one. Mm. I could be swayed either way, but I I, I love Isaiah Evans' game. I think that there's he there's... has that kind of ability. To yeah. put up crazy numbers, but he could be more like Luke Kennard. And if he's and if he's putting those numbers up, man, like then he's barking, like he's like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, oh, he'll like, start, oh, he'll start chirping. There's no question. But like, you when know, he's that's, out there yelling I mean, at NC State fans and shit next season, that's gonna be nuts. UNC bro. fans, 100. Like, you know, but maybe the the comparison is freshman Luke Kennard, where he scores 30 against Lee Forest and then maybe. zero the next game. Right, right. Scores 30 against Virginia Tech and then zero against UVA. Yeah. Like it could be some something like that, but that's a mm-hmm. hell of a punch to have coming off right. your bench. Um, where like you know, you have 31 games, zero the next 30, zero, that's still 15 game, yeah. and that might that might be enough to, to lead this team in scoring. I don't think anyone's right. going over 15, mm-hmm. 15 and a half. I think Unless so, man. I think but, so. I, I think we'll still be a high scoring team. We might not be a high possession team. Yeah. But again, once again, this last season, we felt like we played a lot faster, but we went from 67 possessions a game to 69 in a game, which is significant. Nice. It is an increase, but it's not like, wow, that's a lot faster. We, we, we got a few more shots than we because we maybe didn't turn the ball over as much as something else. So I think this team is going to be one of those where I don't think we're going to be a 74 or 72 possession team a game. I think we're still going to sit in that 69 range because I think that's where John's comfortable. And and I think it behooves this team to not have to take that many shots because you don't have a lot of elite scores on this team. And I think that's the big part of it. I think you can mask that deficiency by getting efficient shots and getting like the, the best shot possible in a rotation. I think that we have elite scores, but it's not a roster constructed for that type of mm-hmm. situation. Like next right. year, you know, if Isaiah were to come back, okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, right? Isaiah could average twenty next year because he's mm-hmm. an elite scorer. Hogs in the least score. Yep. He could he could be that guy. But but the way the roster is constructed, it's just not a situation mm. um where you know you're asking someone to go out there and score 18 right. 19 points a game. Um but you know the other thing is I, I'm loved, you know, what you guys are saying about Taylor Foster. I think that he needs to improve. Honestly, he has to get healthy first. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that he needs to improve around the basket. I think that he needs oh, yeah. to, you know what I mean? Like, those are areas that he needs to improve. I think he's, yeah. his shot is fine. Decision making, you know, he was a freshman. Like, that'll, mm-hmm. that'll come with the territory. But finishing around the limb, I think he's, he's going to be huge for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, we haven't even talked about Tyrese Proctor at all, you know, but, you know, right. I, I mistakenly talked about him last year, you know, leading the team in scoring dead wrong. Um, but, you know, this is, this is a roster set up for him. Mm-hmm. To to you know highlight and accentuate all of his yeah. best attributes as a player, and he's still an elite defender. Yeah, I mean, you you talked about John setting a team up around Cooper, and I think that is true. But at the same time, that also there's a second gravitational pull, which is Tyrese Proctor, and it's a team that's set up for him because yeah. of the way he can lob to these guys, and because of the way he can and pick and move with these guys. The biggest thing on Tyrese's side is making sure that he is a threat on offense because you're not going to be successful in the pick and roll. And John wants to run a lot of picking options. That's one of the things he wants to do is that NBA style offense. So he wants to set it up that way. And one of the things you got to do as a ball handler, you got to be a threat to to take a shot and make a shot within that two point area. So, yeah, now with Caleb and maybe for Caleb, it's not like because 
I really, I really do compare him a lot to Sammy Ewing, and I think I, I just see a lot of similarities there. And one of those things is, I'm not going to call it inability to finish at the rim, but difficulties at the rim. Like, they just aren't at the rim finishers. But they really thrived in the mid-range, and they really thrived from three, and then a lot of times that set up opportunities for them to get two-point buckets. And I think that's how it's going to be for Caleb. I don't think he can force it. I don't, I don't think he's somebody who can just really force it and, and get those two-point shots, which is that's what I was saying about an elite score. I don't think we have somebody other than Isaiah Evans who, like, their their thing, their gig, their job is, like, they are such a good score. You just can't stop them. They're from wired. They're wired to score. Yeah. it's it, We don't have those guys like you mentioned. Like, it's guys that get them in very opportunistic ways. So I think I, I think that, that it's important for, for Caleb and, and Isaiah to be able to – or con to, to be able to take that role and that mantle of being a scorer. Um, it kind of leads uh, uh, perfectly into our next question, which is, um, you know, who's going to be Duke's, you know, Jeremy Roach, Mark Williams, Jeremy Roach flip in that two man pick and roll game. Because I, I, you know, I originally thought about, Oh, okay, I can definitely see Proctor. Coop. Mm-hmm. I can definitely see Proctor. Come on. I can see, mm-hmm. I can see a world where Foster and Sion James, yeah. Or in that kind of position. Yeah. Like, who do you see in that pep and roll? Like, we need a bucket. We need a bucket. CNN and, and and Caleb are the two right now that I think could run a really effective pick and roll because I think they both can be aggressive at the rim. I don't yeah. I don't know I don't know that Tyrese I know we, we want him to be and we then the skill set is there and stuff. I just don't know if Tyrese is ever gonna be an effective at the rim finisher, but like we in traffic is what I'm talking about. But um, but Cian has, you know, he has the profile and body for it, and that's his thing. He's done it for four years at Tulane. And then Foster is another one where, you know, with, with his measurables and stuff, like he's a guy who can, in, in that role, be that guy, I think. I think So I think the pick and roll is really going to be most effective with Caleb and Cian. Yeah, um, I, I kind of agree with that. Uh, the, you know, the more I thought about it, because your, your mind initially goes to, okay, who's the point guard and mm-hmm. who's the biggest, you know, player or coop, right? But then, you know, you start thinking about it. Like, what about, like, you know, Foster and or Proctor and, like, Malik Brown? Because Malik Brown is kind of, you know, he kind of reminds me of Rashawn McLeod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know he, got the jumper. he doesn't have the jumper. He doesn't have mid-range. Yeah, but he can still step out if he needs to. I think you know, so, man. I think you're going to see that from him this year. He's so yeah. important, dude. He's my favorite transfer out of this group. He really, I like, and I like seeing him He, he fit the need more than anybody. Big need, man. Big need. MVP type guy, man. Like his his role this year. Like he's he's gonna be talked about like he's Emil Jefferson or somebody like that. Like that that type of guy, that level of like that uh, impact, that, that connector, right? Like and yeah. and and very skilled, like more skill skilled than Emil was. Like that's not comparing to players, just the impact. Like they they connect the team. Like we just talked about, you know, Kama Malawatch maybe having some struggles on defense early because he's allowing his athleticism to make the decision for him instead of what he actually sees on the floor, Malik Brown's going to erase a lot of those mistakes because he knows his anticipation is wild, man. Wild. We talk, we talk about voice, you know what I mean? Like you talked mm-hmm. about Sheldon Williams having to learn to, to be able yeah. to speak up on the court. That What a blessing for a to have Malik Brown. Malik next Brown. Like, Yo, you got to get, get there. Like, I'm telling you, I'm so excited about that one. Talk about people that are barking, like that, that will be Malik yeah. Brown. I'm so excited about that pickup, man. I really I'm telling you all, man, that's, that is – that is a big pickup, man. That's a big pickup. A hundred percent. Speaking of big pickups, uh, Derek Lively to the Mavericks. I mean, they do not win that game yeah. without Derek Lively. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously it was nice to see Kyrie Irving playing well in the agree, uh, in the second half, it's, dude. Like he's probably it's, like, it's like I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that like yeah, the way that Kyrie like that six. Defense oh and, and bonds players like I would I I honestly want him to be more aggressive, and I think yeah. he'll need to be. I think he'll need to be in this series. But basically, we're talking about Duke in the NBA. There are four teams left. Jason Tatum is the best player, um, you know, on Boston. They should gentlemen sweep, maybe. I would think. I think so. The Pacers are tough. They're tough, and like they've been, they benefited against my Knicks from some yeah. injuries. Our Knicks. <laughs> Howard Knicks, Howard Knicks for some injuries. So, you yeah. know what I mean. But they they made it through, right? They're a resilient team. They're tough. They're very tough nosed. Like he, I mean, Miles Turner, he's gonna be a, a career pacer. I think. Like he just, like you think of Indianapolis Pacers, like Rick Smith and, and Dale Davis and all that. 
like Miles Turner is like one of those guys for the Pacers. So they really do have they got a rugged roster. So the Celtics. Did you just compare? Did you just compare Turner to Rick Smith? I just want to make sure that we have that on the record. <laughs> more, more Dale Davis, like a Dale Davis, Rick Smith hybrid. <laughs> Well, not like Antonio Davis. He's more like, All right, Antonio Davis, fine. fine. Both of the Davises, man. They were both Davis killing the Pacers. But and no, those no, are, no. Those no, are fun teams to watch. Yeah, no, it's it's they're fun. They're fun. It's just, I mean, like Kyrie is just poetic, man. Like that's like what him and Luca are doing on the floor right now is insane. Uh, it's my only, insane. My only complaint with Kyrie is he he's doing. At least in the last series, he's doing mm-hmm. some of that Kobe, you know, when Kobe mm-hmm. was like, you know, oh, I can pass the ball. I don't need to shoot every time. It's like, dude, we need you to shoot. Like, we right, need right, you to right, score. Right. And then right. the second half of, of that game and game six is like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to take over. And he he's does. And he's like, dude, just do that all the time. He's like, so yeah, good. Yeah. He's so um, good. So, like, okay, who who do you – who are you picking? I think we both picked the Celtics, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll put that away. Um, Celtics, man. I think it's going to be. A, I think the, you know, hold on, I, I'm wanting Mavs. I, Celtics, Mavs. I would love to see that. I was, I, that's what I want to happen. Um, I don't know that the I don't know that Timberwolves can defend because they're built on team defense and everything. I don't know that they can defend what the Mavericks throw at them. Well, Ant's going to guard Luca probably, right? No, I think Jamie Daniels will be on Luca. Oh, uh, and then you have well, who's Ant gonna guard? He's gonna have to block Kai. <laughs> he's gonna. Have oh, to he, guard you know, Kai. I, I did hear that. I think he said he wanted to lock on Tyree. Yeah, he's gonna have to guard Kai, man. Like, it's gonna uh, be in fun. That, case, that is, dude. In that, in that case, I don't who who would have who would have said the Timberwolves? When I'm back playing NBA 1991 on Nintendo, I like I'm like. The Mavs and the Timberwolves, like one right, day. right, right, right. You know I mean? Like it's wild to garbage, think about that. Uh, like Gugliotta for the yeah. For the oh my god, dude! Um, I will say this: that um, one thing, and this is putting my tinfoil hat on. One thing that Ann Edwards did, and I love he's a great, great player. He mm-hmm. was really going after KD. Yeah, you know, that was his favorite player growing yeah. up. I think Kyrie be like, look, you're not gonna call me out. You just mm-hmm. trash the boy. Now you're calling me out. I'm gonna show you something. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. takes that chip on the shoulder and he's like, "Hey, sure. like, don't, forget, don't forget about me." Anthony Edwards, man, he's what a player he's turned out to be. God, he's good, he's dude. Fantastic. He's good, man. Oh my god, <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, he's he's Michael Jordan's son, so he's, he's understandable. Right, exactly. Right, but it's the move, a lot of the movements are similar. Like their their shot triangle is very similar, man. Like he actually, all joking aside, he reminds me of Young D Wade. Mm-hmm. Like I know I've, I've heard that more recently. And but Young D Wade was Young play. Jordan. He, you know, the recklessness that he mm-hmm. goes at the rim and, you know, playing like that, like, he talks more than yeah. D-Way did, but D-Way talked a lot, too, yeah, especially yeah. early on, Um, but Ann Edwards is bigger than D-Way, like, he's a, right. he's a, he's a, he's a force, of, like, a freak of nature, like, mm-hmm. he, he can be in this league and play in the way he does for another yeah. 10 years. He's, KG said it on their, on the podcast he has with Paul Pierce, um, horrible podcast. <laughs> I don't know. I like it. I think it's I bad. hate Paul Pierce. I hate just, <laughs> no, I look, just, Paul, I'm not. I love Kevin Garnett. I do. I like Kevin Garnett carries that show. He carries the show. PG, I feel like is on the borderline of being fake and authentic. I think he's. I think he's authentic, man. I think KG is authentic. I think that's just a a shtick. I, I, I think. I, I think maybe. I mean, maybe he developed the character because that's what you do, like in that world and that realm. But I feel like I, I think he's at least he's at least genuine in how he runs it. That's fair. But either way, I mean they're um No, I, and I Edwards though, like, like yeah. I, I don't I don't know that he, like but like if KG was well, the thing about KG was I was gonna bring up with that their podcast, KG was like he was like young Jordan, like 84, 85 Jordan, and it's like because Jordan played that way early on in his career, very reckless, like yeah, attacking everything, using the athleticism and stuff. It's just that Ant Edwards is more skilled than Jordan was at the time because he could shoot threes better. You know what I mean? Like it's just the game has evolved. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying he's the greatest of all time. All I'm saying is I, I see a lot of similarities with them, man. Like and and I, I think don't think it's in an accident. In terms of like understanding the like the game, mm-hmm. which I I don't think that enough players um understand the game. Like he yeah. understood in that game seven, he didn't have his shot. 
Yeah. And he's out there. He's like, well, fuck it. I'll just lock on Jamal Murray. I, I, that mm-hmm. that'll be my contribution. And we don't have enough players in today's game that yeah. are like, okay, my shot's my fault. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to impact the game somewhere else. It's what Coach K always talked about is like having being one with the game and becoming one with the game and having a verb and all that stuff. Like he wasn't talking about, oh, you're just out there scoring, scoring, scoring. It's like you are doing everything that's exactly needed in that moment, in that game, at that time. And yeah, Edwards is like he's he's one of those guys, man. It's also that that Coach K next play mentality. That's where that comes mm-hmm. from. It's like, okay, yeah, you missed a shot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but you 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 forget about that. Like it's always what is next. Yeah. And that's that fist, you know, that all that kind of stuff that he talked about. Yep. Like that's what he that's what he meant by that. And I think it was Billy Donovan that was a really good comment um that he had with one of his players when he was at Florida that the guy was all down, whatever player it was, he was really down because he was up, you know, two of seven, uh mm-hmm. or one of seven or one of eight or whatever it was. And he goes, um, how long does it take you to get a shot off? And he goes, I don't know, like a second. It was okay, and you were one of eight. So for eight seconds of a forty-minute game, you were bad. Yeah. What did you do the other thirty-nine mm-hmm. fifty-two? You know, you were great. You did these defensive things. You yeah. grabbed rebounds. You know, and that's where I think players can learn a lot um, in today's day and age, where you're focused on your NIL and you're focused on, you know, how much money can I make right now? Right. Who's going to pay me the most? You know, if I transfer instead of just Saying okay, maybe there's a bigger picture here, mm-hmm. and if I continue to get better and I contribute to winning, I'm going to stick in the lead a really long time. Yeah, yeah. And that's why a guy like um, oh my god, what am I doing? Josh Hart. Josh yeah. Hart is not the best shooter. He's not the best athlete. Yep. He's not the best. You know, he, he's not a great ball handler. He's he just makes winning plays. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Ultimate like, winner. He he is going to be in the lead as long as he's healthy. Yeah. Because he makes winning plays and he contributes yeah. to winning. Like just do that. Yep. You don't have it, to be the face of the league. And it's not a secret. Like, look, with them, with the Knicks, it's not a secret what Thibodeau is doing, man. Like his style kind of jives with what you saw with Jay Wright with Villanova. And it's like he's got the three Villanova dudes on his squad. Like it's like, yeah, they, they they're wired to win, man. Like that's the Knicks. That's one of the biggest things about the Knicks this year. It was so great with them, man, with that team. They they were yeah. actually like winners. Yeah, and to, to watch DiVincenzo, um, mm-hmm. you know, Juan Josh Hart, like th- those guys, like Jalen Brunson, obviously. Um, yeah. Like the watch, like if I was a Villanova fan and I had mm-hmm. nothing against Villanova, right? So like, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. If I was, yeah. you know, my next door neighbor, he went to Villanova, played at Villanova. Like I was texting him, he lives in Maryland, and I'm like, you got to be the biggest fucking Knicks fan in all of Maryland at this point. Yeah. And he goes, the, he said, the, uh, the New York Wildcats or whatever, you know, the yeah, Nova yeah. Knicks or whatever yeah. it was. And, but, you know, that, that's the kind of stuff that when we were watching the Mavericks, I feel that, yep. you know, I'm watching Connery play with D-Line, but I'm like, like, come on, Mavericks. Like, I'm not a Maverick fan. And, I am yeah. now. Like, the the Mavs and the Celtics play a very similar game where it's like the two-man scoring game and then everything else kind of works off that two-man action. And and the the Mavs do the same thing with Kyrie and Luca. It's like Kyrie, Luca, and it's Jalen Brown and and Tatum on the other side. So I think that style works right now, and that's why I put them in the in the title game. I think I think the Mavs can overtake the Wolves because of that individual play. I think it's gonna be tough. I think that the the Wolves are they have a really solid roster, and I think they that they're do. built. For, oh my god, they know, do. You know they're they're still built for playing great team defense. Yeah. And I think it's gonna, you know, look, Luke is also hurt, you know, right, like right. another seven game series of physical basketball. Yeah. I think that's gonna be tough for them. So I think if you had to put a gun yeah, to my head, Celtics, I, I would say probably Minnesota in six, but I'm hoping that it's the Mavs. Yeah. I, I want to see Kyrie, and nobody deserves it more than D Live. Yeah. So, you know, all the shit he's gone through, I hope that, yeah. um, that he, he gets it there. Um, but yeah, hell man, like it's gonna be fun to watch. We don't talk a lot of NBA anymore. Um, but yeah, off season. <laughs> we got we got a lot of things, you know, headed your way. We got um player profiles on the Patreon. We got uh articles, articles. We got PK slots, you know, that there'll be more of those. And we're gonna have uh shows coming up where our fans can come and join the show. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, on, on the horizon. It's the off season. I know we took a little while to get this one going, but we wanted to wait till the roster was set. Right. AC, let's go Duke. Let's go Duke, baby. Let's go Duke. It's always let's go Duke.